Hey guys, Sean here from The Roman Guy, and today I'll show you how to see Rome in one day. This suggested Roman a day itinerary starts at 7.30 a.m. at the Vatican and ends by 5 p.m. at the Colosseum. There's a lot to see in the Eternal City, so we've created the perfect route to get you from point A to Z. Check out our blog. We have a ton of different itineraries for people with different amount of times in Rome. Click the link in the description below, and also more info will follow during this video. Rome is located in the region of Lazio, south of Tuscany where you can find Florence, and north of Campania where you can find Naples and the Amalfi Coast. There are two major airports in Rome, each of which is well connected to the city. Check out our blog for details. The best place to kick off your day is at the Vatican. If you are staying near a metro station, definitely take it to get to the Vatican. From Termini train station, you can get the A or red line and take it six stops to metro stop Ottaviano. So it's 8 a.m. right now. We're going to the Sistine Chapel. We did a privilege entrance express tour. It's like two and a half hours, so we should be done by about 10 a.m. Okay, after the tour, we're gonna go up to the top of St. Peter's Basilica on our own. Okay, and then we're gonna head into the historical center. You wanna do Rome in a day, you gotta get up early and you gotta get going. There's a lot to see and you wanna get it done before all the crowds arrive. If you wanna do things right, purchase a tour of the Vatican Museums. This way you will see all the most important masterpieces, hear amazing stories about the artists, and not get lost in this massive complex. While in the Vatican Museums, you'll want to see the Sistine Chapel, Raphael Rooms, and St. Peter's Basilica. I recommend climbing up to the top of the dome for an amazing view. So at the end of the dome climb, you actually have to climb a rope to get to the top. Did that look at all like I was climbing a rope? This incredible photo will be a great topic of conversation with your travel companions over a great local dinner. Time to hop on the Metro Line A, the red line, towards the Spanish Steps, which is just three stops away, a whole five minute ride. Created in the 18th century, the Spanish Steps are located in one of Rome's most desirable neighborhoods. They are directly in front of Via Condotti, which is a world-renowned street for the highest of high-end brands. If you hate your money, shop on Via Condotti. All right, Lorna, so fun fact I heard from one of our tour guides is that La Barcaccia, which is the name of this boat, means the little boat. Okay, so apparently this was built by uh, Bernini father and son. So John Lorenzo Bernini, the famous one, and his father. It was because there used to be trees in this area. Like this was all, you know, wooded and, you know, full of trees, things like that. And apparently when Rome would flood, people would, uh, you know, if their windows were open, their things would float out into the piazza. So people would take a boat out and try to gather the things that were floating out of their house or out of their area. Apparently a boat got stuck in the trees and the waters receded and sat here for a long time until finally it fell and John Lorenzo Bernini and his father built the boat there. Interessante. Here you have a quick lunch. We suggest you get pizza al taglio. So I'm here at a pizza al taglio place grabbing a quick snack. You know, I just want to get something in my stomach, get some energy. Um, but do me a favor while I eat this, if you could just uh, like the video if you like the video. And if you love the video, watch other videos we have. Subscribe to our channel. This way you get all of our freshest content as soon as it comes out. Otherwise, enjoy. Mm. Disclaimer. If you want to enjoy a longer lunch, we suggest a sit-down stop at Ginger. It's great. But uh, if you plan on finishing your day at 5 p.m., you'll sadly need to cut out the Pantheon and Piazza Navona from this itinerary. Uh, more information can be found on our blog uh, for the sit-down lunch itinerary. A short walk from the Spanish Steps, you'll find Rome's famous fountain. Now, it might be a hot day, and you could be tempted to create that Dolce Vita scene with Anita Ekburn wading through the fountain, but we advise you do not. Trust us, a hefty fine will follow. Trevi Fountain is a pop culture icon, as well as arguably the world's most beautiful and recognizable fountain. It was built in the 18th century, and if it wasn't so crowded night and day, it would be Rome's most romantic site. 
The story goes that you need to throw one, two, or three coins in the fountain. Left shoulder. Listen, I'm going for distance on this one, okay? It's not just about throwing it in. I want to see how far I can get it, okay? One, two, three. At least like, like 20 feet. Probably 100 feet. Clear to the other side of the fountain. Another short walk and you'll find yourself faced with the oldest and most impressive building in Rome, the Pantheon. Pretty cool. The Pantheon is one of Rome's greatest structures. This structure dates back to the second century AD. It was commissioned by the great Emperor Hadrian and the architect is unknown. Regardless, the building is in incredible shape. It is often argued among scholars that the dome is probably the best preserved structure from antiquity. It is still the largest solid poured concrete dome on earth. This structure features the tombs of Italian icons like King Victor Emmanuel and Raphael. The focus is on the oculus or the hole in the dome. Even rain can get in. It's pretty awesome. Do not come to Rome and miss the Pantheon. No, bad idea. So how many minutes walk do you think it's been between the Pantheon and Piazza Navona? Eight? Actually six. Even better. Lorna, you know this piazza used to be like a circus, like Circus Maximus? But yeah, he had a circus here, and it's actually still shaped like the original circus. You can see the buildings are all built on the foundation of the stands. And in the center, instead of having like horse races, they had like athletic matches, like wrestling matches and all kinds of Olympic style sports. It's pretty cool. The piazza is pretty incredible. Today you'll see some incredible fountains. In the center, the Fountain of the Four Rivers by John Lorenzo Bernini. In front of it, the Church of St. Agnes in Agony. It's also an incredible work of art by Berromini and Rinaldi. After six minutes from Navona, you'll be in Largo, Argentina. You may not have heard about this place before, so I would save this route for the true I gotta see everything type people. Largo, Argentina is most commonly referred to as a place where Julius Caesar was murdered. Although this is a myth, it was not far from the truth. He was murdered just a few blocks away, steps from the theater of Pompeii. Today, you can see ruins of four of Rome's oldest temples, which date back as far as the 4th and 5th century BC. You'll also see a ton of cats, as it is a modern day cat sanctuary. After Largo Argentina, on your way to the Colosseum, you'll be in Piazza Venezia, where you can find the Victoriano and Trajan's Column. Trajan's Column is an incredible structure, depicting Trajan's conquest and victory over Dacia. It is by far the most impressive feat of architecture in the area, featuring an internal staircase that allowed people to go to the top in the time of the Romans. The Victor Emmanuel Monument is one of the most visible buildings in the city of Rome, and it's the city's centerpiece. It was inaugurated in 1911 to commemorate Victor Emmanuel II, the first king who unified Italy. Since 1921, the monument holds the tomb of the unknown soldier and has the eternal flame of Rome, which is guarded by two soldiers. This eternal flame goes back from ancient Roman legend. If you have more time, we recommend climbing the Capline Hill, visiting the Capline Museum, and heading over the top of Victoria Emmanuel building. It's a beautiful view, but if you're limited to a day, you may have to skip it. You'll be able to see our next and last destination from Piazza Venezia. You guessed it, the Colosseum. A great place to end your walking route through Rome is the Colosseum. The history of this structure goes back 2,000 years. It has inspired so many different cultures and eras of mankind. It provided bread, wine, and blood to the ancient Romans, shelter to the people of the Middle Ages, inspiration and materials to the artists of the Renaissance, and one of the world's most beloved tourist attractions, starting with the grand tour of Europe to present day air and rail travel. The key to planning a visit to the Colosseum is skipping the line. 
You can do that in two ways. One, buy your ticket online or in advance. Or two, buy a tour. If you do do a tour, try to schedule between 8 a.m. and 9.30 or after 2 p.m. This way, you can do the Vatican in the morning and the Coliseum in the afternoon. Coliseum tours vary each day, so you have to check our website for that. For those planning a solo visit, we'll meet you inside. The, the tour guide was telling me that gladiators look more like Danny DeVito than Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, you know, when you think gladiator, you're going to think like muscular, six pack abs, all buff. But in reality, they were kind of chubby men, okay? A little bit of fat, because they said that the, uh, the fat was like insulation from the sword, you know, protect them. Makes sense. Although the films don't portray it that way. If you're making good time, I recommend going over the Palantine and Forum. Your ticket for the Coliseum includes entrance there, and it's an awesome site, so check it out. Oh, Lorna, funny seeing you here. Hmm, interesting. It's almost like we planned it. So now you should be a pro. You know everything you need to know to see Rome in one day. If you like this video, click the like button and let us know. If you love this video, then subscribe. You get all of our latest videos as soon as they come out. Otherwise, if you have questions, comment them below and we'll answer them as soon as we can. Ciao for now. Do you like that angle? I feel like you just can't go to Rome without visiting the Trevi Fountain. It's just... <laughs> I like this gelato. I wish it had a like button. <laughs> I'm sad it doesn't.